Men Championships. Dwight, let's take uh, a look at the women's hammer throw competition already completed. Well, Barry, this is a great facility and a tremendous setting. This is fabulous sophomore Selala Sua of UCLA. We'll be hearing a lot from her. She spins very slowly around the ring, really just uses her strength to get the hammer out there, and she got it out to a personal best. 97 U.S. and Pan Am Junior Champ in the NCAA's Discus Champion. This is Jennifer Vale, just a freshman at USC. Palm Springs High School, she registered last year. Her coach was John Carlos, the great sprinter from 1968 when she was at Palm Springs High School. And she was a U.S. junior finalist in 1997, but the champion, we will be hearing a lot from this woman as well. She's in all four throwing disciplines. Rachel Noble, the senior from UCLA. And on this throw, she gets the hammer with three turns out to a new Pac-10 meet record of 186 feet 10 inches. She was number seven in the U.S. in the hammer throw in 1997 and won the Pac-10 in this event last year, as well as getting third in the shot and fourth in the javelin throw. So Noble gives UCLA a 1-3 effort in the women's hammer. Here are and the NCAA marks and the Pac-10 Mark, 100 qualifying time as you see, 44.25, and uh, two of these schools, being uh, UCLA and USC, have reached that already. Of Arizona in lane two has and both these schools can go over the Pac-10 meet record as we look at the leadoff runner from Washington State, Francesca Green, who has also entered in the long jump. So it's Great conditions here for this race. There's really virtually no wind whatsoever, right around 70 degrees. And because it's sort of overcast, you don't have any glare to deal with with regards to looking at your particular runner, your teammate coming through with the baton. Yeah, and we've talked earlier about the fact that uh, everyone is telling us this is a very fast surface here at Angel Field. It's been newly redone. In fact, it's not quite 100% complete yet. There was some question e even earlier this week as to whether it would be prepared for this competition, and yet it is. That's the anchor uh, people waiting uh, for their chance, which will come in uh, roughly 45 seconds. All right, the mark. Yeah. Washington State got stuck, and USC and UCLA both out very quickly, as you might expect. UCLA making up a little bit, and so is USC. It is USC in front at the first handoff. And a little bit of sloppy pass by the Trojans, Dwight. Yes, and UCLA taking advantage of that down the backstretch. That's Shakita Jones for UCLA against Tori Edwards. Edwards a better sprinter, but still the race is very close to even. And again, USC probably made the first pass, so it's USC and UCLA coming up to the final way. Running the anchor for UCLA, Andrea Anderson with something to prove Malika Edmondson for USC and here's the pass they make it at about the USC. same time it is going to be USC and now coming on strongly is Anderson but USC is going to win it UCLA is going to finish second and Washington State gets there for third really an outstanding effort for USC considering the poor first pass 43.8 unofficially which would be under the Pac-10 record but really the race happened between Joanna Hayes of UCLA and Carla Estes on the third leg. Joanna Hayes not running as good a turn, and then UCLA having a little bit of trouble bobbling that pass between Hayes and Anderson, and that was just the break that USC needed. Now we're looking at maybe a lane violation or even a zone violation by the Trojans. We'll have to wait and see exactly what happens, but I will tell you, this is a very tight uh, race. Joanna Hayes on the right of your screen, of course, for UCLA and Carla Estes for USC. Now watch these passes. They take off pretty much close to each other. UCLA actually even in the lead at this point, but look what kind of problems Joanna Hayes and Andrea Anderson have making their exchange. And there's the violation. Carla Estes to Malika Edmondson passing out of the zone. So USC will be disqualified. And not only do they not win the race, they get no points in the race, which is devastating for the Lady Trojans. Right, makes a grim situation, just about an impossible situation. Here we've had one running event, and for all intent, the trophy is being handed to UCLA here. And not only does that just hurt them from a point standpoint, it hurts their morale. You want your relay team to really get you in a good position. USC apparently winning the relay, giving them 10 points. And now they get, not only do they not get 10, they get zero. Well, and you said right at the beginning, it's all in the exchange. Absolutely. And they just simply ran that zone too long. It's clear here that Malika Edmondson, a son of uh, Warren, excuse me, daughter of Warren Edmondson and Barbara Farrell, two pretty good sprinters in their times, took off too early. And Carla Essie's had to chase her, and they only have that 20-meter zone in which to pass the baton. And you have to watch for the baton. Baton was definitely out of the zone. And although they won the race here head-to-head, -head, 
the Trojans will be disqualified for that zone violation. UCLA will be moved up to first place, so everything going right for the UCLA Lady Bruins, unlike what happens to them normally in the NCAA meet where everything seems to go wrong for them. So Washington State will benefit by getting a second place decision out of this. But UCLA just driving the bus in terms of the women's competition here. Well, their strength in the throwing events as well as a number of great athletes sprinkled throughout the meet is going to make it very, very difficult for anyone, anyone to be competitive with them. As we take a look at the men's pole vault competition, this is Dominic Johnson of Arizona, the senior NCAA sixth in the decathlon last year, second of the Pac-10 in that event, but also a good pole vaulter. Clears 18, two and a half on his second attempt. He competed for St. Lucia in the Olympic Games in Atlanta. This is senior Scott Slover of UCLA, who was second at the meet last year but won it in 1996 and his first attempt at 18 two and a half a little brush of the chest he is over and the 10 points go to UCLA in the men's pole vault Johnson second Peter Bacharski of Oregon takes third we'll also see him later in the long jump competition from the University so with the pole vault competition in the books we turn now to the men's four by 100 and uh, this too should be a very competitive race and again if uh, if form is to hold true then it's going to be between USC and UCLA but uh, we will get our first look Dwight at Jawarren Hooker of the University of Washington who has been nothing short of sensational this year boy am I impressed by that guy I watched him run the semifinals and he just jogged in the hundred uh, his run 10 18 this year but it's clear that he's ready for more than that he ran the 200 and a personal best in his semifinal 20.6 Seven zero and was just walking the last and 50 meters. He's a good one, and he's got no attitude because his first sport is football. Absolutely. It's, uh, it's interesting. You always see uh, track athletes play, becoming football players. This is a football player who's become a track athlete. And it's really great that the coaches have allowed him to come out. Usually freshmen are almost uh, have to abstain from track because they have to be in spring football. The coaches are usually not cooperative in that area. And that they've let him come out. It's really given a boost to the Husky team, and again, he has been undefeated in the 100 meters and gives them a great lift in the first part of their relay. What the relay team does with it after that, uh, it's another question. That's the thing, they're gonna have to keep it close for Jawaran Hooker to have a real chance. As I said, this is the definitive team sport. As you look at uh, Southern California, Marcus Hollowell will run the lead leg for them. Fastest qualifiers coming in, but not by much. UCLA and SC uh, extremely competitive. Well, these teams always battle head to head, and even though one team might have more uh, talent from a standpoint of speed over the other, and, and it has switched back and forth over the years. Back when I was at UCLA, we had great sprinters, but we had a heck of a time getting that baton around without either bobbling it or passing it out of the zone. That competition is so close between these two schools that, again, we'll watch the baton passes very, very closely, because this is bragging rights. Yeah, USC very proud of the fact that although they've lost the dual meet for 20 20 straight years. They are the defending Pac-10 team champions, a fact that they have rubbed in the faces of UCLA all year long, and this is UCLA's men's chance to get even with that, and we should get a real good idea what's going to happen right here with the relay. And as we said, the surprise team in the competition here is the University of Washington. A lot of good sprinters on this Washington team, and who knows but that they could surprise. Again, the job for them is just to stay close until they can get to the anchor lane. Lane assignments for the men's 4x100. California will be on the inside in lane 1. Arizona State in lane 2. They could be a dark horse here, too. Washington in lane three. U of A will be in lane number four. Then it'll be UCLA and SC in lanes five and six, running right alongside each other. Washington State out in lane seven. And the University of Oregon will be in lane eight. And we are just about set to go. Running the first leg uh, for UCLA, Brian Fell for USC, Marcus Hollowell for the University of Washington, Willem Ryan. Brian Fell there. 400 meter hurdler who is the Pac-10 defending champion in that event so he's got that event to run later on today gets him off to a good start University of Washington again with Jawarren Hooker he just hopes that his teammates are good technical sprinters that they can get the baton around and get him even a chance to be in the ballpark with the anchor people from UCLA and USC Jerome Davis and Jim McElroy respectively there is McElroy in the uh, in the blue and gold of U UCLA and right outside him Jerome Davis who is going to be really working hard today running the 200 the 400 and probably both relays looking at a couple of pretty good football players running the anchor leg here Jawarren Hooker and of course McElroy a guy who many people feel might be taking them the number one in the first round of the NFL draft this coming season and Hooker is a big time player we'll talk more about him just about set to go as you look at the records, the NCAA mark 38.23 set by TCU back in 1989. The qualifying mark of uh, both these favorite schools, USC and UCLA, have reached that. And the Pac-10 record, uh, that's not totally out of the question either. Back. 
Crap. We're underway. Get in that very quickly. It was Martin Sotawa for USC. And in lane three, William Ryan doing a pretty good job making up the gap, too. First pass, UCLA makes the first pass quick, the quickest. It is UCLA now, and running that leg, Brandon Thomas, very quick leg. And coming on again now for USC is Charles Lee, third pass. And it's extremely close. UCLA on the lead now with Tony Surface as we come to the anchor leg. It's going to be between UCLA and USC. Here's the anchor leg running for UCLA is McElroy. And McElroy's got about a half a step on Jerome Davis. McElroy and Davis and UCLA wins it. USC is second in Washington, finishes third. I'll tell you, Barry, the very first exchange set that entire race up. Brian Fell of UCLA did a fantastic job of keeping with Marcus Hollowell in that first leg, but his pass to Brandon Thomas was outstanding, and Thomas is really not the sprinter that Charles Lee from USC is, yet Thomas with that receiving the pass at full speed, which is what you want. You gotta keep the baton moving, and those two guys did it. Brian fell on the right, and then Brandon Thomas, as we see Brian, we see um, McElroy, but watch this. This is the third pass, Damian Allen, to Jim McElroy. Already UCLA's got a couple of meter lead here. Now McElroy is not the technical sprinter that a Jerome Davis is, but Davis is not a pure sprinter. He's a better quarter miler. We'll see him in the 200 and 400 today. But McElroy just had such a great lead and was able to receive the baton almost at full speed. And that is the answer in short relay running. You gotta keep the baton moving through the zone, let the guys coming in and the guys going out do so cl as close to full speed as they possibly can. And Jerome Davis trying as hard as he can to catch Jim McElroy, but it just wasn't gonna be today. UCLA winning it, 10 big points for the Bruins, 39. 52 officially for UCLA, so just missing the Pac-10 record. Right on top of it, joy all around in the UCLA camp, and uh, another football player doing pretty well in another sport. More of the Pac-10 championships after this. If somebody had told me that, uh, Bob, in, in two years, you're going to be a millionaire, I would have told them they're crazy. It, that, that, those kinds of things don't happen to me. Someone becomes a millionaire every 37 minutes. I started with $2,000, and a little over a year later, I had worked that up to about $100,000. And now I'm, I'm clipping along at about a $25,000 a month pace. Do you know how to turn the stock market into a business? Would you like to get 18 to 22% monthly returns? That's right, monthly returns. Flo, I'm Wade Cook. I wrote the best-selling book, The Wall Street Money Machine and Stock Market Miracles, to help people learn how to turn the stock market into a business. There's a lot of money to be made, and you can be making enough money to retire, quit your job, and spend more time with your family. Now I put a seminar on cassette. It's called Income Formulas, and it's yours absolutely free. Call the number on the screen. When is it your turn? It touches the heart. It reflects the soul. And for six days, 24 hours a day, it will be here in Moscow. Created by the people who built the wall in Washington. Carried throughout the country with help from Operation TNT. And brought here with help from Century Communications and organizations throughout the community. Wednesday, June 3rd through Sunday, June 8th at the University of Idaho. Come touch the wall that heals. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, dogs and cats. No, that's a joke. It's circus time. The Big Shrine Circus is coming to town June 4th, 5th, and 8th. Elephants, lions, and tigers, daring men and women on the flying trapeze. World famous acrobats with stunts you won't believe. Get your advance tickets at Lewiston and Clarkston Albertsons. All show times are 4 and 7 p.m. for the Big Shrine Circus at Bingle Field in Lewiston June 4th and 5th, and at the Kippy Dome in Moscow Monday, June 8th. Home teams, Fox Attitude. You're watching Fox Sports Northwest. We welcome you back to Angel Field here in Stanford. Pac-10 Track and Field Championships. Barry Tompkins, Dwight Stones, and also Tom Fewer down on the field to uh, chat with the winners. As we prepare now for the women's 1,500 meters. And this, too, Dwight, promises to be a very competitive race. Very competitive and a very good race for the USC Lady Trojans as they have two athletes in this field who should score very, very well. Defending champion Grazina Pence from Poland. 1997 Pac-10 champion. Looked very, very good in the heats. Yes, Bob. As we see how they are going to be lining up. 12 finalists 
in this race. Anna Wapucic of USC also someone to watch very closely as well as Sally Glenn, a freshman from Stanford, could also be a contender. But look for Pence and Wapucic to try and work as a team as best they can to keep the pace as slow as possible because they have to double back in the 800 meters. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, this promises to be a tactical race, and it's going to be interesting to see how it does set up. We are underway. Women's 1500, four laps. Sally Glenn of Stanford. That is Sally Glenn of Stanford, who has jumped out to an early lead, ducking underneath now and taking over the lead. Alyssa Reedy of California. And they're spreading themselves out a little bit better than they, uh, we saw them do so in the heats. There were a couple of very dangerous packs in the heats and girls getting spiked during the race. And of course, those are always sit and kick affairs anyway when you have heats. They only had two to qualify automatically in each of the heats and then a raft of runners afterwards as uh, time qualifiers. And Grazina Pence just sitting back out there on the outside of lane one, her teammate, Anna Wopovic, the freshman right next to her, sick number 689. What a potent attack these two are going to have. They get them both for another year. Pence just a junior and Wopovic just a freshman. So Reedy, Glenn, Wopovic, right there and uh, anybody's guess early on here and it looks uh, to be set up as a kicker's race once again and of course Pence and Wilposich both have a good finishing kick. Well, just a 73 second first lap it's going very much the way the heats did and you see that the pack is starting to bunch up way too much this is a dangerous situation because the runners on the inside get boxed and they have to make a move of some kind they panic sometimes and there's oftentimes a disaster that we'll see in an international competition that is run this way because you've got a lot of good athletes who any one of which could win the race Pence staying out of trouble though out there on lane at the outside of lane one she may be running three or four meters further each lap by staying there but at least she stays out of trouble now watch them all like look at them bunching up even athletes out in lane three there for a moment so we need to have someone pick up the pace slightly to get these athletes to string out a bit angela froze of washington surges to the front here as we come down toward the end of the second lap and uh, puts a couple of yards between herself and Pence and then alongside Pence and Sally Glenn of Stanford Reedy Dopp drops down to the inside. Well Kavish knows she cannot do anything with this pace she has no kick certainly not one significant with the other athletes in the field so she's got to try to push the pace a little bit we'll see what the 800 meter time is remember 73 seconds for the first 400 and about the same for this second 400. So they went out slow. That is why Danielle Kibish has gone up there and spread the field out a little bit. Now it's a much more manageable situation as the athletes are strung out nicely. Very tough for an athlete to get boxed in this situation. But look at Pence and Wopovich right there in second and third, just measuring. They know they don't have to get Kibish too much room because she'll come back to them as she has no kick and still plenty of racing left in this particular 1,500 meter distance. So the race sets up well for the two USC competitors now Pence and Wapusic running in second and third place respectively. Kabish of Washington continues on the lead as we come up to the bell lap. They're coming up on the outside now that is Wapusic. Pence now taking over the lead. It is Pence and Wapusic and that is pretty much what we expected. 318 with a lap to go and this is just classic team running in a championship race. Now they can just simply make sure that they make some distance between themselves and the third and fourth contenders and just sort of pull away, working off of each other. Seems that there's not as much energy expended when you've got someone you're running against. You run against them and with them every day in practice to try and hold back as much as they possibly can over this last 250 meters. Pence puts about a yard between herself and Wapusich, her teammate, and Reedy of California in third place ahead of K. Bush of Washington. But the race is going to be decided on the front end. It is Pence now with a couple of yards on Wapusich as we head to the final turn. Grazina Pence of Southern California, Anna Wapusic of Southern California. It is Pence now Pence putting a little bit between herself and her teammate. Grazina Pence is going to win it for the third year in a row. Pence running steadily. Wapusic will finish second. 
the race for third looks as though it'll be Reedy of California, and that's the way it ends. Pence the winner, Wabusa to second, and Reedy of California finishes in third place. Well, what a great measured effort, unofficially 421 for Grazina Pence. And if it's an effort that she can take as little out of herself for the 800 that she just did it. An absolutely brilliantly run race between the two lady Trojans. Just worked the field for as slow an 800 as they possibly could. Kavish went ahead knowing that she had only any chance that she was going to have to score. She had to take the pace out a little bit. She did so, but certainly not enough to the point where these two athletes couldn't stay with her. And then the last 300 meters, it was just a race between the two to see who was going to be the champion. And three times now, it's been the same woman, Christina Pence of USC. Sama finds that other gear in the Pac-10 championships. Remember earlier in the women's 4x100 relay, uh, a disqualification. Let's go down to the field now. Third member of our team, uh, Tom Fuhrer, with an explanation. And Tom, what happened? Well, Barry, uh, what's a track meet without a controversy? And in this case, it was clear from the replays that you guys showed that USC had passed out of the zone. However, the problem has been that the meet referee, John Chaplin, who also happens to be the U.S. Olympic coach for the 2000 Games, is nowhere to be found. And he still has to make a determination. And then after Chaplin makes a determination, it needs to go to a jury of appeals. Once again, you see here Malika Edmondson taking off too early. And clearly, the pass came out of the zone. But no official decision can be made until first Chaplin makes a call, and then it goes to the jury of appeals. Barry, back up to you. Just like the courts uh, in the real world, isn't it? Yeah, the only yeah. subjective part of our sport is the relay events, the only team events. So, uh, as Tom said, what's a uh, championship event without a controversy? And we have had ours, and it came in our first running event of the meet. Uh, let's take a look at the javelin competition, right? Well, here's senior Bruin Josh Johnson. You might know him as Rafer Johnson's son. He's a defending Pac-10 champion in the javelin. Was fourth at the NCAA meet last year in Bloomington for the Bruins. But here he was only second to this man, es Esco Mikola of Arizona, just a freshman the Finnish junior champ in that event. And boy, do they know how to throw their javelin in Finland. The most popular event in track and field is the javelin throw in Finland. And Esko gets a personal best, 250 feet, seven inches to win his first of what I expect will be several Pac-10 championships. Johnson gets eight points for UCLA, Stedelman from Washington State, and Larson of Arizona round out the top four. So those are the results in the men's javelin. A bit of a surprise as uh, Arizona gets the points. As you look at the crowd, a terrific crowd. We were talking about this during the last commercial break, right? But uh, a virtual sellout here at Angel Field. It's nice to see. And it's great because the old stadium, of course, uh, could accommodate about 110,000. And when you had a meet like this, you would have 10,000 or so. It looked like nobody was here. This is a great setting and very much of an incentive for the athletes to do well. The crowd seems close. They're enthusiastic. Stanford is a good track team on both the men's and women's side, so they'll have plenty to cheer about, especially in a race like this with uh, one of their best athletes in the field, Michael Stember. Well, this should be, again, a very competitive race. Uh, Michael Stember, of course, uh, of Stanford, will be the local favorite, but uh, he's got a lot of help in here. Uh, Bernard Legat of Washington State, uh, one to watch. Eric Kamau of Washington State, certainly one to watch. Mark Hauser of uh, UCLA. Uh, Stember and Hauser are the kickers, and uh, we expect Legat and Kamau to go out and try to set the early numbers and uh, see if they can steal it. Well, they certainly tried that yesterday as we see Stember on the left side of your screen, just a sophomore ran the best high school mile a couple of years ago up at the Prefontaine meet where he ran 402. Haven't had a sub four minute miler in the high school ranks since uh, Marty LaCorey way back in the late 60s, but Stember is a good one. He has great speed. He considers himself more of a, of a speed runner than he does a strength runner, but yet he's able to hang in with most uh, grueling paces, and he may see one here in the uh, qualifying. Uh, Bernhard Laggett and uh, Kamau of Washington State went out in a blistering pace. Sub 55 seconds was the defending uh, Pac-10 champion, and if they go out like that, they will come back, and Stember is probably mature enough to know that those guys will come back to him. Uh, I think he has enough maturity, enough experience to know that uh, those guys cannot maintain that kind of a pace. So it's going to be interesting to see, uh, again, a tactical race, but very different tactics than we saw a moment ago in the women's 1500. We're underway. Men's 1500, four laps here of Angel Field. And that is Hauser early on. Running up close to the pace. Here are the NCAA and Pac-10 records. Michael Stember. And the 341 30, of course, the NCAA qualifying mark. That's Mark Hauser of UCLA running in second place. 
I'm going to tell you, Barry, this is a little unusual. I'm surprised to see Stembert leading, Hauser second. That's fine, but Legat and Kamau have decided to just hang back. Maybe they ran the qualifying the way they did to make everybody think that they were going to go out fast and try to steal it. They're just sitting back and letting Stember set the pace. Interesting, isn't it? Exact opposite of what we expected here. It's more like the way that the Legat ran the 800 yesterday. Very, very relaxed, very, very easy. Actually went out slower in the 800 than he did in the 1500. First 400, it's 61.3, much more of a, uh, of a pace that you would expect to see in a championship race. But now that the Washington State athletes have not taken it out, and now Kamau takes the lead. He may push it a little bit from here, both Lagat and Kamau now in the front. They may do, do some team running the way that Pence and Wapovich did also in the women's 1500, but Stember and Hauser are both good enough and smart enough to know what they have to do with these two athletes. They know they have great talent, but now it's gonna be a kicker's race. So it's Kamau with the lead now. Lagat running on the inside in the uh, baby blue and uh, yellow of UCLA. That is Hauser running directly behind them. And then on the inside, you see Stember who's nestled in behind. And Greg James of Oregon running right now in fourth place. Stember dropping back a little bit. Stember back, dropping back significantly. He's back in seventh and he's badly boxed as this pace has even slowed more significantly than the first lap. Certainly a tactic that the uh, Washington State athletes are employing in order to use their kick. 206 for the 800. So they threw in a 65 second lap. I'm surprised Stember is not hanging with this pace. He is laboring back in about ninth place now. And watch Mark Hauser of UCLA. This is an important opportunity for points for the Bruins. This is not a place where they expect to do real well, but Hauser looked extremely good in the qualifying, and he's staying up there in the top three. Bit of boat race so far. Larrick Prosser of Oregon has taken over the lead. Uh, somebody's got to take the lead. Come out running second. Hauser in third place. Legat in fourth. And Stemper's still laboring back in the middle of the pack, and he's uh, running out of laps and running out of time. Well, this race is being perfectly set up for Bernard Legat, the uh, defending champion. And Stemper now comes back from nowhere yes, to second did. place. So it's Legat and Stember. Hauser is starting to drop back now. Kamau in fourth. Now look at Legat. He just took off the three-quarter mile time, 3.03. So they threw in a 57-second third lap, and Legat is gone. Stember in pursuit, but he certainly doesn't have the foot speed that a Bernard Legat has. And the race for third, fourth, and fifth is going to really be interesting, but Legat is gone. Stember trying to hang on to second. No chance of catching the Washington State athlete. And what a strange race this turned out to be. He just stepped on the gas right around the first turn of the final lap, and nobody's going to get him. Legat's going to win it. Hauser is going to finish in second place. And coming on hard for Washington here. Jeff Perry of Jeff Washington, the sophomore, he gets Stember for third. So Legat wins it, which was expected, but Hauser with eight points for the Bruins, 344 unofficially, so just over a four minute mile pace. But what a strangely run race, brilliantly run race for Legat. Hauser just got sucked into it for second place. Stember drops all the way back to fourth. Yeah, Stember never really in the race, even though he loomed up at the start of the final lap. But uh, you gotta hand it to Legat, a brilliantly executed race. Uh, again, a tactical race, but one of a very different sort. Don't go away, we're coming back. Hey, no, down here. Instead of running out for stamps, shouldn't you be running your business? Imagine a simpler way. Get the personal post office from Pitney Bowes. Send mail without ever going out for stamps. Just wait, punch in the postage, and voila. Professionally metered mail and no wasted postage. You can also add a personal message to get your mail noticed. And postage refills by phone in 30 seconds, day or night. Now listen up, because here's what you'll get, besides a lot more time. You'll get the personal post office and money-saving electronic scale. So there's no wasted postage. For a 90-day free trial. Free is good. You'll also get the mail marketer software. Create really nifty direct mail to help your business grow. Call now for your 90-day free trial, and you'll also get our mail marketer software absolutely free. Now I'll watch your business grow. Hey, I look good in red. Call now and get all this for a 90-day free trial. The personal post office. Mailing made simple. 
property owners. Why hassle with a shaky sickle bar like this? Instead, call now for free details about the amazing DR Field and Brush Mower. The DR cuts tall grass and weeds, brambles, sumac, even tough saplings up to one inch thick. The DR chops most everything it cuts. There's no mess to trip over or to pick up. You can clear and maintain meadows, pastures, roadsides, walking paths, and woodlots with unbelievable ease. So call this number now for free details about the amazing DR Field and Brush Mower. The world of college athletics, no conference compares to the Pac-10. During the 96-97 season, the Pac-10 dominated the NCAA, winning a record 14 team championships. Seven Pac-10 schools brought home at least one NCAA crown, while Stanford became the first school in NCAA history to win six titles in a single year. The Pacific 10 Conference salutes the student athletes and their coaches who produced this tremendous achievement, truly making the Pac-10 the Conference of Champions. Barry Tompkins, Dwight Stones, Tom Fewer back at Angel Field here in Stanford. Before we move on, let's remind you that every night at 10 o'clock on Fox Sports Net, it's Fox Sports News Primetime. You get all the scores, all the highlights, all the breaking stories covering your hometown teams seven nights a week. We're there. Fox Sports News Primetime every night at 10. Check your local listings. Well, we come now to the women's 100-meter hurdles, and uh, this one really comes down to Joanna Hayes and the rest of the world, right? Yeah, it really does. Um, Here we go. The only other person to really look for in this particular race is going to be Natasha Danvers, who's the runner-up to Joanna Hayes last year. But it's Hayes' race to lose. But again, Barry, there's 10 hurdles. It is a technical event, and uh, we've seen a lot of different things happen over the years, including the great ones like Gail Devers. Well, Joanna Hayes will start in lane number five, and Danvers will be alongside of her to her left lane four qualifying time. So Hayes qualified a full six tenths of a second faster than anyone else. We're underway. Hayes is out very quickly. She did hit the first hurdle, however. It is Hayes, and running alongside of her, Danvers, now very close. Hayes and Danvers. It is Hayes with Danvers second. Hayes going to win it. Danvers finishes in second place, and Michelle Perry of UCLA gets there for third, and Hayes went down hard and might have pulled a hamstring. I've got to tell you, this has been a meet that she wanted to get back to so badly it drove her entire year because the NCAA last year when she hurt herself coming off of the sixth hurdle and the 400 meter hurdles and really dashed UCLA's chances of beating LSU with the team title at the NC. She slammed into that very first hurdle. The nerves clearly showing because she knows the kind of emphasis that is on her performances today. She's also in the 400 meter hurdles as well as the 4x400 relay and I'm hoping that that is just a cramp or just a slight strain because she's got the NCAAs in two weeks and to have worked as hard as she has all year to recover from that injury last summer at the NCAAs in Bloomington to come back here in great shape and suffer another injury is just a terrible, terrible blow for the Lady Bruins. Watch right out of the blocks. Joanna Hayes gets a great start in lane five, but look at this very first hurdle. She just slams it. I mean, it wasn't even close to clearing it, and she allowed Natasha Danvers in the race by about the fifth hurdle. It was not clear who was going to win this thing, and then because of that, Joanna Hayes really stomped on the fuel about the seventh hurdle, and that is probably where she started to strain it. She had to get tight in order to get the lead over Natasha Danvers. She knew that she had to win this race, and she probably recruited some muscles that she shouldn't have at the time when she shouldn't have, and also she wins the race. She may have just ended her season. Yeah, it looks like more than a cramp, and you can tell by that uh, look of disgust on her face. Uh, she is in some pain, needless to say, and uh, remarkably enough, uh, she finished in 13.15 and pulled up what it was a couple steps before the finish line. You could see the pain on her face coming off the last hurdle. She kept herself together emotionally and physically for three hurdles probably and then came off the last hurdle with the lead she's lucky she didn't hit the uh, hit the track before the finish line frankly Take you back now. Uh, take a look at the men's shot put competition. Uh, once again, uh, always very competitive in this event. Well, no question. The throwers in this conference are unbelievable. UCLA has had phenomenal throwers for years. Ian Waltz, the junior from Washington State. It seems that the Washington schools occasionally will come up with some guys 
who can really get it out there. And the styles are really a contrast. Walt's using the old Perry O'Brien glide technique, which is a little more consistent, a little easier to control. Then you got Ben Lindsay, a terrific sophomore from Washington, and a very competitive field this was. He didn't have a John Gadina type who was going to throw over 70 feet. These guys were all bunched right around 62, 63 feet. Lindsay having a seasonal best on his fifth throw of the competition, but then Chima Ukwu of Arizona, the senior, steps into the ring. This is not a team that's going to really be in contention from a standpoint of the team title, but Ukwu, so strong. Look at the legs on this guy. Six foot two, 275, and slow across the ring. All three of the top scorers using the old glide technique, which is really not normal these days. Ukwu winning it with 63-4, and look at the separation between Lindsay and Waltz, just a little less than two inches. UCLA gets fourth, where they have really dominated in the men's shot put over the last decade. Pachima Ukwu, another guy who, uh, trying to learn a game of football, and he's a project uh, down in Arizona, but getting better every year. Let's take you now to the men's 110-meter hurdles, and uh, this promises to be a race uh, between the USC Trojans, uh, William Aresi and uh, J.K. Mambo, and uh, Aaron Washington. Washington of Washington State, uh, quickly rising hurdler. You're looking at the outside, Ross Bomben in lane number eight of California. And Bomben has already won the uh, Pac-10 Decathlon Championship, and the race will be in the middle between Aracy and Mambo. And this is another event, Barry, that's just down, cyclically down in this conference over the last few years. Aracy, the Pac-10 defending champion, has just run 13.71. And here we go. That's Aracy in lane number four, man, getting a good start. Mambo running alongside of him very well. So, too, is Watkins running extremely well. It is Aracy and Watkins now moving into second place. Aracy is going to win it. Watkins with a lean for second ahead of J.K. Mambo. Well, USC really would have liked to have had one, two in that particular race and probably would have, but J.K. Mambo having some problems there in the middle of the race and Watkins taking advantage, the freshman coming up for Washington State to take advantage of some problems, but Arese is really the class of that field was in the top six finishers in the NCAA championships last year, 13.80 unofficially, a good time, but certainly not the times that we're used to out of this conference with the, the likes of a Greg Foster that we've seen in the past. Aracy comes out of the blocks very, very well. As you can see him, fourth from the right, actually third from the right on our screen, but he has the best technique of everyone in the field. He's a little wild with his arms in the beginning, but he gets his rhythm down very nicely. And Mambo really struggling through the middle of the race, which allows Aaron Watkins to get back into it. And Watkins holds off Mambo and Arese winning it. So first and third for the USC Trojans. All right, so uh, the Trojans picking up a couple of points and a good second place finish for Watkins of Washington State. We've got more to come, so don't go anywhere. There's an incredible freedom that comes from owning a cellular phone. I've been expecting your call. Hi, I'm Dick Clark, and now everyone can enjoy the freedom of the new Isis cellular phone from Philips with great cellular service for just pennies a day. You can make a call anywhere. Hello. Or get a call anytime. Got car trouble? Help is just a call away. Just call the 800 number from the comfort of your home, and our friendly staff will help you. The phone arrives at your door within a few days, ready to use. Get the Philips Isis cellular phone, a $199 value, now just $19.95, complete with battery and charger. Call now and get this genuine leather case, a $30 value, absolutely free. And when you sign up for an annual rate plan, you'll receive up to 100 minutes of free airtime. So pick up the phone, America. It's for you. By ordering your Philips Isis phone, activated with local cellular service, made available by Worldwide Direct, you'll have everything you need. Pick up the phone, America. It's for you. If handheld trimmers get you down, call this number for free details about the revolutionary DR trimmer mower. The DR rolls light as a feather on two big wheels, trims around rocks, along fences, walls, and buildings. Plus, the DR mows lawns, fields, even roadside ditches without struggle. So call toll-free now for a free catalog about the revolutionary DR, the DR trimmer mower. I fell off a swing. I just got hit by a baseball, that's all. I was playing with matches. Let's bring 
you up to date on the team scores here uh, through nine events for the men and 10 events for the women. And uh, University of Arizona is leading in the men's competition uh, and handily right at the moment over Oregon, UCLA. And in the women, Stanford uh, off of uh, its good, excellent first day performance leading over UCLA. We don't expect that to hold up, but at least for the moment, uh, very good for the home team. We come now to the women's 400. And this, too, uh, promises to be a very competitive race. I know I've said that with just about every race, but it's fact. Yeah, it really is true. Andrea Anderson that we just saw on the screen, lane two for UCLA, the junior. She was on that 4x100 relay team that won for UCLA. Also, Cicely Scott has always been a consistent performer for UCLA, finally in her senior year. And Carla Estes also from that 4x1 relay for the USC Trojans that unfortunately was disqualified, and they lose all those points. But Arizona State has Arlena Dr Davis and... Geronda White, so it should be a very competitive race. Nobody that's really running terrifically well, no real standout or a person that you expect to win like an NCAA championship, but still a competitive race in perfect conditions, not a, even the hint of a breeze for the 400. Andrea Anderson feeling she has something to prove. Very disappointing qualifying time yesterday. That's what's put her in lane number two. We are off, and in the start of the 400, getting off very quickly. Carolyn Jackson of Arizona has made up a little of the stagger. So, too, in lane number three, Arlena Davis of Arizona State, and Jackson in lane number five, running extremely well right now. It appears to be Jackson also moving up now on the inside is Anderson. Jackson seems to be trying to run away with this race, running the second 200 extremely hard. That straightaway. Now, this is where the race is made or broken. Andrea Anderson making a nice move in lane two. She's able to see Carolyn Jackson this entire Entire race, Jackson can't see anybody at this point. Yeah, and Anderson is moving up on Jackson as they round the final turn. Now we get a good idea. It appears to be Anderson in front. Jackson running in second place right now. A real battle for third place. This one coming down a stretch, and it is Anderson of UCLA leading. Jackson in second place gonna have to find another gear. Anderson is gonna win this one very close over Jackson. A battle for third place. It's gonna be one, I believe, by Carla Estes of USC. Well, that second lane, lane draw for Andrea Anderson ended up not hurting her all that much, unofficially 52.5, because she was able to watch and draw off of Carolyn Jackson, who went out just like a house on fire right from the gun and down that backstretch, and she made up such a stagger so quickly that she was really running by herself for about 200 meters where she could see no one whatsoever, but Andrea Anderson able to key off of her as we see her limping a little bit, and she may have been a little bit inspired by her teammate Joanna Hayes going down in those hurdles, knowing that she needed to step up after a lackluster performance yesterday in the heats. Unofficially 52.52, better than two seconds faster than what she ran in the qualifying. As we see Anderson making a nice move around the first turn. And Carolyn Jackson so far out in front, we can't even see her at this point. But Andrea Anderson just staying within herself. And then now we see Carolyn Jackson, the red of Arizona, starting to pay the price for that fast early pace. And Andre Andrea Anderson really using the slingshot of lane two. And what a shock to Jackson that must have been, knowing how hard she went out, that she was actually behind a couple of meters coming off the final turn and never had, as you said, Barry, the other gear or the endurance to hold Anderson off. Andrea Anderson certainly getting a little bit of rig there, but she kept her form together enough that it carried her home to victory and 10 points for the Lady Bruins. And a good finish for Carla Estes of USC to pick up third place ahead of, or behind Jackson and Anderson. So that's the women's 400. And again, uh, we probably have overused the word competitive, but uh, so far it's been as advertised. It certainly has. There's been no real runaways in any of the events that we've seen so far, and uh, except for, of course, Bernard Laggett in the 1500. It's one of the most strangely run championship races I've ever seen. But Andrea Anderson's got to be proud of herself to have made the adjustments that she needed to from yesterday's heats to come up and win this 400 and a really excellent time. So an excellent race for Andrea Anderson and she does make amends for what was for her a very disappointing uh, qualifying event. As we uh, look back before we look ahead to the men's 400, let's look ahead, uh, look back rather on the men's hammer throw. And the men's hammer really starting to get a little more popular the last few years because of guys like this, Bank Johansson. Also, the U.S. has the silver medalist from the Olympic Games in the hammer in Lance Steele. Johansson, the defending NCAA champion, had all he could handle here, though, throws out to 228-4. The senior from USC, unfortunately, unable to defend his crown as Mika Leho of Arizona.
Arizona State, also a senior. Both these guys living in the shadow of Balaj Kiss of USC, who won the Pac-10 and the NCAA four years in a row. Leho, the two-time finished junior champion, fourth in the 96 Pac-10 meet, was hurt for last year's meet. Spins it out there to 228 feet, eight inches, and just edges Bank Johansson by four inches in the men's hammer. Travis Nutter of Cal gets third, and Connolly and Strand fourth and fifth for Stanford and another sixth place finish for UCLA those two or three points really helps in that team title and Connolly is a familiar name to uh, certainly is of course 1952 I believe his dad was 56 actually 56. Very good. thank you thank you I got, at least I got the right decade that's right the last yeah. American uh, to win the hammer we get a good look at the crowd here at Angel Field and uh, perfect conditions for track and field. Very busy around these parts as the NCAA baseball championships, uh, regionals going on uh, concurrently with this, just a couple of hundred yards away. But we turned from a couple of hundred yards away to 400 meters right in front of us here. And uh, we've talked about the fact that most of these races are competitive. Quite frankly, we don't expect this one will be. We expect the race to be for second and third. No question about it. Uh, Jerome Davis, the defending champion from USC, has three of his teammates in this particular race. Four Trojans in the finals, albeit uh, lane eight and nine will be occupied by Leroy Jordan and Michael Walt, not in enviable lanes to be running in, but uh, Jerome Davis really should be by himself in this race. As we take a look at him, he'll be running out of lane five, and we expect him to hook up a little bit later with uh, Jaworn Hooker in the 200 meters. Hooker we will see in the 100, but Davis needs to try and expend as little energy as he possibly can and hopefully pull his teammates to some big points here. No uh, UCLA Bruins in this 400 meter final and I, I gotta tell you back from my days 25 years ago at UCLA it would have been uh, the Bruins with four guys in the finals one of them's the coach right <laughs> that's right exactly so we're set to go in the 400 very even start Davis immediately picking up a lot of that stagger. So too is Ray Carter of USC in lane number three. It is Davis lane five, Carter lane three, running what appears to be one, two out of the moment. Carter really picking up a lot of ground as he runs up on the shoulder of B.J. Dawson of Washington. But it is Davis lane five who appears to be in first place. Carter USC appears to be in second place. Derek Pryor of Washington on the outside of Davis also running reasonably well, but this one is going to be Jerome Davis as they make the turn. Davis is going to have about four yards on Pryor. It is Davis with Pryor of Washington in second place. Davis going to have it all by himself. Pryor of Washington and a late run by Dawson of Washington. It is going to be Dawson of Washington getting there for second. Pryor of UW finishing third, and the race is expected belonging to Jerome Davis. I've got to tell you, it's got to be helpful as we see the unofficial time, 45.4 for Jerome Davis, a fine effort pretty much all by himself. Has to be helpful for him to have two of his teammates, Leroy Jordan and Michael Walton out there in lane eight and nine to sort of draw off of. He has to know what their pace is. He's got to know what they're running. They're out there by themselves. That was probably going to keep him from putting out too much energy. Then he ran a, just a brilliant far turn, came off the, off the uh, turn with a great lead and was able to just cruise home he's got great technique that's a probably as little energy as he can possibly expend to run that time an excellent time and a brilliantly run race yeah really it's really interesting too how he dictated everything in that race prior second or third place finish had a lot to do with davis's first place finish 100 meters both men's and women's coming up after this this is imagine tv Dear John, I'm leaving you and taking the mercury. Right now, you can run off in a 98 Mercury Mountaineer with low 2.9 APR financing or make tracks in a 98 Villager with your choice of 1% APR financing or $2,000 cash back. With deals like this, why go anywhere else? Till next time, imagine yourself in a Mercury. Everybody's looking for a deal. What are you going to give me, they say? At Suzuki, we've got the answer you've been waiting to hear. Because we're going to give you cash. Buy a new Suzuki outboard from 25 to 225 horsepower, and we'll give you up to $500 cash back. So what are you waiting for? See your Suzuki Marine dealer for all the details. Just say, give me cash. 
Tacoma, four-wheelers 1998 pickup of the year. Nobody makes a more powerful V6 compact pickup. Demand the best for less. Now at your local Toyota dealer. Toyota Leadership Days featuring non-stop savings on Tacoma. Just 4.8% financing for up to 48 months. Special Leadership Days, low 4.8 financing on the number one selling compact 4x4 pickup. Tacoma, one incredible truck. One unheard of offer. What else would you expect from a leader? It touches the heart. It reflects the soul. And for six days, 24 hours a day, it will be here in Moscow. Created by the people who built the wall in Washington. Carried throughout the country with help from Operation TNT. And brought here with help from Century Communications and organizations throughout the community. Wednesday, June 3rd through Sunday, June 8th at the University of Idaho. Come touch the wall that heals. Fox Sports News. We are there. Weekend 6 to 8. Back from Hoover Tower, the center point of the Stanford University campus, as we look at Angel Field, the newly redone Angel Field, which uh, is still not quite 100% complete. What is 100% complete, though, is the last word. Jim Rome telling it like it is, tackling the tough topics, mixing it up with the biggest names in sports. It's the last word, and it's weeknights, right at midnight on Fox Sports Net. Once again, uh, excellent crowd here at Angel Field uh, who has seen an excellent meet. They saw an excellent 400 meters, and right now Tom Fewer with Jerome Davis. Tom? Thank you. Jerome, you made a 45-44 look very easy. Yeah, it wasn't that easy, you know. Coming out here, all the competitors. Get your juices flowing. This is my third championship in a row. So that was something I wanted to defend. So I put a little pressure on myself, too. In lane now, coming up, you've got your Warren Hooker. There's been a lot made of a confrontation between you guys, him moving up from the 100, you moving down from the 400, and you're in lane three. How is that going to affect you? I'm just going to go out there and run it like I'm a 100-meter runner. Get out the first 100, and then just let my quarter-mile strength carry me through the end. That's my goal today. But I'd like to thank God for being able to come out here and run so well. Thank my parents and my coach and the lady in my life. Ash. Thanks, Jerome. Congratulations. Back up to the boot. All right. Thanks very much, Tom. Jerome Davis uh, with a little bit more work to be done. Of course, it's easier for Tom. Fewer than it is for him. The easy quarter mile. I like That's it. true. It was his best uh, best winning time of the three Pac-10 championships he's had, so he put out a little more energy perhaps than he uh, wanted to, but boy, this is going to be a good one, this 100, just to see what Jaworin Hooker has in store in that 200. He should win this easily. He's starting out of lane five. Charles Lee of USC he looked good in the relay. He certainly it can be a factor in this. Marcus Hollowell ran a nice leadoff for USC. Three Trojans in this men's 100-meter final. And two Bruins, along with Jaworin Hooker, who is undefeated against collegiate competition in 1998. Quite an athlete, Jaworin Hooker. And you, you mentioned it earlier. He's a football player who has become a track athlete. Very stoic personality, excellent concentration in these kind of events. That's the bottom line. And just being a freshman and, ha and being primarily a football player, he really does have a very nice technique of running the 100. His 200 needs a little bit more work, but his 100 looks very, very good. If he had time to work on it, he could be one of the great ones. But uh, I think football is probably a little more important in his life. Well, he's got to be a special football player, too. He already is. So it's Hooker in lane five, Charles Lee of USC alongside him, Marcus Hollowell of USC to the outside of his teammate Lee. And Brandon Thomas of UCLA can make a little noise too, running in lane number four. But Hooker the man to watch. It is Hooker who's already taken a lead. Hooker in the lead, running in second place, very close for second. Hooker's going to win it over in the lane number one, or lane number, lane number one, Damian Allen of UCLA. Got up to finish second. That's a very tough lane to finish second from 10 to 4 unofficially the time for Hooker. No contest. Well, no contest, but more importantly for the UCLA side, lane 1 and lane 9, you can just get lost over there, which is great for a guy like Damian Allen, who ran 
out of lane one. No one ever saw him because the race was in the middle of the track. But Hooker got out so well, and he is so relaxed, keeps his technique together throughout the entire race. There's nobody around him. I'm certain he never saw Damian Allen coming up closely on his inside. And Trojan's finishing, it looks like, third and fourth as well. But look at him. His concentration is excellent. Just a freshman. He drifts a little bit to the right. That's not unusual. But look at the way he puts, picks him up, puts him down. Tremendous concentration. There's the second breath of the race. He's so used to being out there by himself. Be interesting to see what happens with him with somebody right there or if he has to chase someone, which might happen in the 200 meters. But the 100 is all his. Well, a big time run for the freshman from the University of Washington, 10 2 4. Takes a bow, and why not? And interestingly enough, Damian Allen and Jawarren Hooker are likely to hook up on Saturdays, at least one Saturday this, uh, this fall, too. Damian Allen is a defensive back at UCLA, and another very good one. A little bit earlier today. Senior Nana Kawar of UCLA, who competed for Jordan in the 97 World Championships, was fourth in the NCAA shot put last year and is the defending champion, but not enough today. Selala Sua of UCLA, her teammate, and of course they have such a terrific throwing core thanks to coach Art Venegas. Sua has already placed in the hammer throw and she is the runner up in the shot put and disc at the NC, excuse me, at the Pac-10 and third in the NCAA in the disc. Selala Sua winning it, Kawar second and Rachel Noble scores in her second event, a one, two, three sweep for the Lady Bruins in the shot put. So the Bruins setting the tone once more in the women's competition, although as of the moment, at least, they are uh, still trailing Stanford as we turn to the women's 100 meters. And uh, once again, this race should be contested in the center of the track. Shakita Jones of UCLA, lane five, the favorite with Tori Edwards of USC will be alongside her in lane number four. In lane six, you're looking at Donnell Linder of Arizona State. Here are the lane assignments. Higgins, Winkle, and Young in the first three lanes from the inside out. Tori Edwards in lane four. Shakita Jones in lane five. Donnell Linder in lane number six. And fourth freshman in this final. That bodes well for the future in the Pac-10. Fair start. It is uh, Edwards of USC out quickly, but in the first couple of steps, Jones is right on her. It is Jones and Edwards. Jones in the blue, Edwards of USC in the maroon. It is going to be Jones of UCLA who wins it. Tori Edwards finished second, and I think Danielle Linder got there for third. The freshman from UCLA, Shakita Jones, in a bit of an upset here in the 100, even though they had the best, two best times in the Pac-10 coming into this race, you would figure that Edwards, having a little more experience being at this level a few more times, that would bode well for her. But Shakita Jones, the freshman, again, may be inspired by Joanna Hayes going down in the women's 100 meters, knows that the rest of the team has to step up. And Jones in the blue and gold of UCLA keeps her head down for the first 30 meters. That is key. And then she's got Edwards to pull off of. She keeps gaining inches on each stride, and at about 70 meters, she starts to pull even, then pulls away. The freshman from UCLA winning over the junior from USC, they'll hook it up again at this meet next year, but right now it's 10 for the Lady Bruins, and great future for Pac-10 sprinting with four freshmen in that final. And a little posturing at the end for Shakita Jones. She's the winner of the women's 100. We got more to come from Angel Field. I'm this huge debt, but Pac-10 University. To advertise your full-time, part-time, or internship opportunity, contact your Pac-10 Career Center or call Job Track online. 1-800-999-TRACK. We welcome you back to Stanford Pac-10 Track and Field Championships, and we come now to an event that we have been looking forward to. This is the men's 800, and uh, you see the lane assignments. Jason Lund, Stanford Lane 1, Richard Gervan of Oregon Lane 2, and then comes the competition. Rasto Kiplingott of Washington State, his teammate Bernard Legat, already the winner at 1,500 meters. Patrick Duimana of Arizona, just a freshman, a raw freshman, but a good one. Michael Granville, of course, formerly a great high school athlete of UCLA Lane 6. Jess Strutzel of UCLA in lane seven with Jeff Perry of Washington, Mark Hassel of Stanford rounding out the field. And we are underway in the 800. And Duamana, the freshman from Arizona, he's from Burundi and he comes with very high credentials. Vinisti Nyangavo of uh, Burundi. They are doing pretty well too, U of A. Not uh, quite good enough to win the whole thing, but nonetheless pretty well on a beautiful day here at Stanford. We've got more to come. Feature race, the men's 200 after this.
This simple looking device is the key to unlock your body's hidden potential. It can change the look and shape of every line and curve on your body. Because it's the weight, the challenge, and the secret behind one of the most effective fitness machines in the world. Introducing the Bowflex Power Pro. Bowflex uses patented power rod resistance to give you an incredibly smooth, natural feel for over 60 different health club quality exercises. With features like a built-in aerobic rowing exercise, convertible grips, and convenient folding capabilities, it's easy to see why a Bowflex was selected by Fitness Magazine as the best home gym and was awarded a Consumer's Digest Best Buy. It's time to get the body you want with no money down and payments as low as $33 a month. Call right now for your free video and brochure. Discover the body you've always wanted with the Bowflex Power Pro. What would you call one location that is home to over 60 different businesses, convenience services, dozens of retail stores, restaurants and cafes, entertainment, not to mention many different events and activities year-round? Well, we call it the Falouse Mall, your non-stop, one-stop location for all your shopping needs. Remember, it's at the Falouse Mall in Moscow, and no matter what it's doing outside, you'll find it's always nice inside the Falouse Mall. Make a day of it at the Falouse Mall, the center of it all in Moscow. Can I help you find something? I'm having a hard time trying to find a movie to please everyone. Well, you know, every Tuesday and Thursday, it's only 99 cents a movie. 99 cents? <laughs> Tuesday and Thursday, 99 cent video rentals at Howard Hughes Appliance and Video in Moscow. Wednesday at 7 on Fox Sports Northwest. We welcome you back to Angel Field here at Stanford as the Pac-10 Conference Track and Field Championships wind down. And uh, Dwight, I would have to think the men's 200, uh, if not the marquee event, find me another one. Yeah, it certainly is. And the 200, of course, is that strange distance that many people wonder why it's even being run a half a lap. But I will tell you, this is our premier event. We have a scratch from Jason Manley, the freshman from Cal, but in the middle of the track, Jerome Davis in lane three, and Jim McElroy, who looked very, very good uh, in, the, in the relay, anchoring the Bruins in four. And then Jawarren Hooker, who just ran away from the field in the 100, much the way Jerome Davis did in the 400. Now they meet at somewhat common distance. Should be very interesting to see who's going to take this, the sprinter or the guy with the endurance. Here's Jerome Davis, fresh off his 400-meter victory, the fastest that he's run in his three Pac-10 victories in the 400. That wasn't that long ago. It's got to have taken a little bit out of him. Less taken out of him is probably Jawarren Hooker, who ran the 4x100 relay anchor for the University of Washington, but ran a very easy 10.24 100-meter victory. This freshman is really in a good position to establish himself as a force in this race. And he, however, is outside of Jerome Davis, so Davis will have the opportunity to at least key off of him during the turn. Off of the turn, it's going to be speed versus strength. Hooker undefeated this year at the zebra striped shoes. Davis said he's going to run it just like 100 and then just hope that his 400 strength will take over. Here are crucial numbers, and we are off. And Hooker got out very quickly. And he, again, has made up the stagger immediately on the man outside of him, uh, Lee. And it is Hooker who leads coming into the turn. Now let's see what Davis has. It is Hooker with Davis now moving up into second place. Hooker and Davis. Davis trying to run him down. It is Hooker and Davis. And Hooker is going to win it. Davis is second. Damian Allen of UCLA. A fast closing third. And I got to tell you, Barry, just like in the women's race with Tori Edwards, the person who ran the turn the best was the one that won the race. Jamorne Hooker knew that Jerome Davis could key off of him, and he basically said, listen, I'm the sprinter. You got to come and catch me. You may be the strong guy, but 200 meters is not that far for me. I'm pretty strong, too. Hooker has run the 100, 200, and 400 very effectively this year in the Pac-10. He's got a top five time in the 400, and he just took off in that 200 in that turn. Look at him make up the stagger on Charles Lee from USC and Damian Allen from UCLA. Watch, it will come out of the left side of your screen, out in front in the purple of Washington, and Jerome Davis in lane three, he is chasing him. And Davis probably had to use an awful lot of energy to chase him, and that's what made the difference. Davis's strength did hold up very, very well, and Hooker by no means blew his doors off. 27 day, the same time he ran in the heat, equals his personal best. Let's go down to Tom Fuhrer right now with Jawarren Hooker. Tom? Jawarren, was it the turn that won this race for you? Um, yeah, you know, I think so. That was something that we've been working on. 
the corner part of my 200 race, so it was decent today, so it, you know, it able me to win the race. You're undefeated this season. The NCAA championship's up next. What will you run? Uh, I'll be running the, uh, the 100 and 4x4. But not the 200? No. Why is that? Well, uh, you know, at uh, Nationals, there's uh, three heats of each sprint race, so, uh, you know, eight races is kind of a lot for a weekend. What about football? Are you uh, still going to plan on playing football in the fall? Yeah, I plan to be out there in the fall. Well, tremendous meet for you. Are we going to see in the uh, closing event the 4x4 today as well? Yep, I'll be in the 4x4 next. Congratulations, and we'll send it back up to Barry Tompkins. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, thanks very much, Tom. Jawaran Hooker, uh, tuck that name away. You're going to hear it a lot, both in this sport and on a football field. No question about it. The winner of the 200 and the winner of the 100, we're coming back. you got to get dirty. You know, if you go through life just sticking to the roads and if you're designed to be off-road, then use it. Getting dirty is tons of the fun. I think it's a, it's a sort of, it's a mental cleansing, if you will. Cleaning your insides while dirtying your outsides. And that's what Chevron with Techron's all about. It helps keep my engine clean and emissions low. No gasoline cleans your engine better than Chevron with Techron. Chevron, simply smarter. Man, what a rush. No, down here. Instead of running out for stamps, shouldn't you be running your business? Imagine a simpler way. Get the personal post office from Pitney Bowes. Send mail without ever going out for stamps. Just wait, punch in a postage, and voila. Professionally metered mail and no wasted postage. You can also add a personal message to get your mail noticed. And postage refills by phone in 30 seconds, day or night. <laughs> now listen up, because here's what you'll get. Besides a lot more time. You'll get the personal post office and money-saving electronic scale. So there's no wasted postage. For a 90-day free trial. Free is good. You'll also get the mail marketer software. Create really nifty direct mail to help your business grow. Call now for your 90-day free trial, and you'll also get our mail marketer software absolutely free. Now I'll watch your business grow. Hey, I look good in red. Call now and get all this for a 90-day free trial. The personal post office. Mailing made simple. In the world of college athletics, no conference compares to the Pac-10. During the 96-97 season, the Pac-10 dominated the NCAA, winning a record 14 team championships. Seven Pac-10 schools brought home at least one NCAA crown, while Stanford became the first school in NCAA history to win six titles in a single year. The Pacific 10 Conference salutes the student athletes and their coaches who produced this tremendous achievement, truly making the Pac-10 the conference of champions. We welcome you back. We come now to the men's 5,000. This is another one that's a real grab bag. The defending champion, Mebra Tom Keflazigi of UCLA uh, from Eritrea is uh, in this race. And uh, so too is the man who beat him uh, in the 10,000, which was uh, held yesterday, Abdi Abdirahman of Arizona uh, from Somalia, 10,000 meter champion yesterday. And that was a surprise. He went out and kind of stole the race. And so we'll see what uh, kind of tactic is being run in this race. Well, you got uh, Kefleski, who won both the five and 10,000, not only here last year, but in the NCAA championships, as we see the numbers for the NCAA records and, and Pac-10 meet record. He was also the Pac-10 cross country, NCAA cross country champion, pardon me. You got the Hauser twins from Stanford. Stanford has eight runners in this 5,000 meter final, including Gabe Jennings, a freshman who uh, had a lot of high hopes running on his career here at Stanford. Five ducks in the field, including the uh, steeplechase champion, Mika Davis. So this could be a very interesting race, but they are jogging right now. Yeah, Mark Hauser uh, leading uh, the jogathon here with uh, Simone Mudd of uh, California running alongside of him. Uh, and then after that, uh, three, four Stanford runners. And a few scratches out there. On back to Jeff McClarty. Uh, so this race uh, will be decided over the long haul. 12 laps, of course, and uh, we are very early into this race, and uh, the contender's not really uh, looming up quite yet. So we will come back to this race as it goes on, and it will do so for uh, 13 minutes and change. Let's take you back right now to the men's long jump. And Barry, the only guy to really look good in the competition yesterday, Hillary Mawindi, who is the 1997 Pac-10 champion, and he defended his crown very easily here. Washington State senior 
couldn't quite hit 25 feet on this runway. They didn't have any significant win. I was trying to figure out what the problem was. He was the best one down the runway and the best technique. Also on the women's side, same situation. Francesca Green, also of Washington State. She's a sophomore. The only woman over 20 feet. And she got a 20 feet, six and a half inch jump, a PR. She was the 96 Pac-10 runner up in the 100, as well as the long jump winner. Had a year off last year because of a uh, injury. Mawindi winning it easily. Two Oregon athletes, or three Oregon athletes, including Peter Bracharski. And the women's results finds the Lady Trojans, Jennifer Oliveira was second, and then Stanford with a fourth and a fifth. So some good points for the Cardinal. Washington State getting both long jump results, and I have to tell you, the long jump, another event that has really been down in the Pac-10 over the last few years. Meanwhile, we are watching the men's 5,000, which is currently going on live as the lead runner being reeled in by the pack here, and still there is a not much to choose between uh, these. That is Gabe Jennings of Stanford wearing number 13. The leader right now is Abdi Abdirahman of uh, Somalia and Arizona, the winner of the 10,000 the other day. He won it in very similar fashion. He just went out and smoked the field. Nobody could catch him, but he's not able to put any distance between himself and the pack today. And in fact, right now, he relinquishes his lead. Still very slow times, 217.6 through the first two laps. And the most important development in this race is that uh, Mevraton Kevleski of UCLA has opted out of this race. He has a scratch in the 5,000, as is one of the Hauser twins from Stanford. Brad Hauser not contesting the event. You can only hope that Kevleski has simply decided not to run because the UCLA Bruins are doing well enough in the team title that he doesn't need to, getting ready to defend both of his championships at the NCAA meet later on in Buffalo, New York, which will be totally different conditions than where he ran at Bloomington, Indiana last year. It was a distance runner's paradise, very cold and quite uh, rainy, but Kapleski possibly not an injury, simply saving himself for two weeks from now. So Gabe Jennings, or rather Jason Balkman now of Stanford, uh, has taken over the lead here with uh, still more than nine laps uh, remaining. Let's uh, take you back once more. Look at the 3,000-meter uh, steeplechase, which was uh, contended yesterday. Well, Steeple Chase always early in the competition. Mika Davis of Starting Oregon, certainly the class of the field going into the competition. Much warmer conditions yesterday, a little bit windy for the Steeple Chasers, but this is where the Oregon schools and oftentimes the Washington schools get some good early points and establish themselves if they've got a team behind them to contend. Unfortunately for the Oregon Ducks this year on the men's side, they don't have a contending team, but Mika Davis setting the pace very early in the Steeple Chase. <laughs> and it was really interesting what happened down the final lap because, again, getting those points early, very important. Mika Davis easily running away from the rest of the field. But an interesting development back in second and third place. Christian Belts of Washington, the junior, getting second. But Devin Elizondo, of, a senior from UCLA, not expected to finish maybe better than sixth gave his team six points early in the competition, really made a difference for their chances in this Pac-10 championship. Remember, they lost to USC by just nine points last year. Mika Davis, the only Oregon champion here at the Pac-10 meet, wins an 8.45, which is his first, or his personal best, and Elizondo getting third was a big upset. And Davis and Elizondo also in this 5,000 meter race. Let's go down now to Tom Fuhrer, who has a very special guest. Tom? In Oregon, 31 years affiliated with the program, 26 as head coach, and this is your last Pac-10 meet. Why Pac-10 meet? Why is the timing for this year to be the last one? Well, I'm uh, approaching 65, and uh, it's time for some younger guys with new ideas to, to step in. And it's been a great run for me, but uh, in all runs, there's a finish line. So my finish line is this year, and it's been great. I've enjoyed it, and this is a great meet to. Uh, Great Pac-10 meet to finish with, and of course looking forward to Buffalo for the NC2A, but it's been a great run, and uh, it's time for someone else. You've coached some of the greatest athletes in U.S. distance history, people like Steve Prefontaine, Rudy Chapa, Alberto Salazar, etc., jo Joaquim Cruz, Dub Myers. What is the most memorable moment that you've had as a head coach? I gotta say that's a hard one to answer. There's so ma been so many good years of uh, some great memories and it's hard to pick anyone out so I, I just have to say it's been a great run there's been a lot of speculation about who will be replacing you and how difficult it is to uh, have a program with just over 12 scholarships do you have any insight you could give us as to who may be the next University of Oregon track coach well I think that uh, John Gillespie my assistant certainly uh, has deserves a shot at it he's, he's done a great job as an assistant coach I think would make it a, a good head coach and 
My philosophy is our school program is to develop track and field, and I think it, uh, John has that, that philosophy of trying to, I know it's tough with our limited scholarships, but to cover the events and continue to develop track and field and, in all the areas, not just to be a, a sprint school or a running school. Thanks, Coach Dellinger. Really appreciate you being here. Congratulations on all the great years of uh, service to Pac-10 track and field, and we'll send it back up to Barry. All right, thanks very much, Tom, and to Bill Dellinger. As you can see, uh, we approach the halfway point of this men's 5,000-meter run, and uh, Abdi Abdi Rahman of Arizona has got about seven yards right now on Brett Hauser running second for Stanford. Gabe Jennings of Stanford running in third place. And Simon Mudd uh, continuing to uh, keep contact with the leaders, running fourth. And once again, in case you uh, weren't with us earlier, Meb Tom Kevlesky of UCLA, the defending champion, NCAA champion as well at 5,000, NCAA cross-country champion, opting out of this 5,000-meter race. He was the runner-up in the 10,000 meters last night and uh, has decided not to run the 5,000. The UCLA Bruins uh, seem to have the team title well in hand. He may be just saving himself for Buffalo in a couple of weeks. And it's just going to be a matter of if this pace continues, these uh, Stanford athletes are in a great position to perhaps get some decent points for the Cardinal here in front of the hometown fans. 7.05 at the halfway point, as you saw. You know, every Sunday on Fox Sports Net, it's NFL Europe. The players you used to see star on Saturdays are the players you're going to see in the NFL this fall. They're the players that are laying it out every Sunday on NFL Europe. Catch NFL Europe Sundays on Fox Sports Net. Check your local listings. Back to the 5,000. It continues to be the three who have been on the pace for the last three or four laps. That is Abdi Abdi Rahman of Arizona. Brett Hauser, the, one of the Hauser twins from Stanford, although Brad uh, has de decided not to run in this race. And then alongside him, him it is Gabe Jennings, just a freshman. I got to tell you, unless these two Stanford athletes decide to pick up the pace a little bit, they are just they are just giving this race to Abdi Abdurrahman, who just broke the 10,000 meters open last night after about five laps, ran away with it. Kaleski could never catch him. They keep this kind of pace up. They're really not challenging him at all. They're not testing his endurance from uh, the 10,000 last night. Somebody should be forcing the pace here and making him run, trying to take a little bit of the sting out of his kick. Unless things change uh, dramatically here, I, I would be very surprised to see uh, him not be a double champion. So Hauser, uh, again, just sort of running with Abdi Rahman instead of running away from him. We'll come back at the conclusion of this 5,000 meters, about four and a half laps to go. When we come back. You know the game. Now get inside it. Log on to NBA.com and reach every team and every player. Explore NBA News and Notes. Visit the NBA store or chat with NBA players and coaches. Go courtside for live playoff action and exclusive series by series analysis. Playoff excitement is in the air! It's all here. The online world of the NBA. Go to the playoffs, NBA.com. Property owners, why hassle with a shaky sickle bar like this? Instead, call now for free details about the amazing DR Field and Brush Mower. The DR cuts tall grass and weeds, brambles, sumac, even tough saplings up to one inch thick. The DR chops most everything it cuts. There's no mess to trip over or to pick up. You can clear and maintain meadows, pastures, roadsides, walking paths, and woodlots with unbelievable ease. So call this number now for free details about the amazing DR Field and Brush Mower. Have you done anything all day? Got my report card, straight A. Finished my extra credit assignment. Found a home for a stray cat. Got you a better rate on your mortgage. Did your taxes. Donated blood. Gave Mumphy a haircut. Oh, and I ordered dinner for the whole family on me, which should be here right about now. Think that's refreshing? Try this. The crisp new taste of 7-Up. It's everything you like about 7-Up, just more of it. 7-Up with a crisp new taste. Now that's refreshing. Dad? I fell off my bike. I tried to buy a baseball. I tripped over a rock.
come back and join the men's 5,000. And uh, Abdi Abdi Rahman of uh, Arizona almost toying with uh, Brent Hauser as Hauser came up on his shoulder and actually uh, poked his nose in front a little bit. And Abdi Rahman just kind of stepped on the gas a little bit and gunned it again and got back in front of him. And it, it almost looks like he's just sort of keeping him on the outside and playing with him, doesn't it? I mean, it certainly would be a surprise to me if that's not the case. Hauser, if he was going to want to test to see what was going on, would maybe throw a, a 63 or four second lap in just to see what the guy's made out of. But if he stays with him like this, I can't imagine anything else but uh, a second place finish for Hauser because Abdi Rahman has the kick. Two laps remaining for the two leaders. And uh, Jennings has lost contact but remains in third place, but probably uh, a good 40 meters behind <laughs> then from California Bolata Asmaran and his teammate Mud back in fifth place and on the front end it continues to be Hauser and Abdi Rahman with Hauser again trying to get himself in front and again Abdi Rahman trying to shut him down but Hauser getting on the gas a little bit more here and now he is putting a little distance between himself and Abdi Rahman if he's gonna break him he's got to do it now because there's just not much running left to go. About uh, 900 meters left in this race, and he's going to have to start to push it and slowly pull away from Abdi Rahman. Abdi Rahman certainly has a better kick, but he did run a 10,000 meters yesterday evening. Now, that is a factor. Now, Abdi Rahman has closed the gap down again, but they will come to the bell lap with Abdi Rahman about a meter behind. I looked down there and I said two laps to go. I figured I had more time. Howes is going to have to really start to goose it here. Abdi Rahman just hanging on him. I can see him maybe just waiting all the way till about 100 meters to go to make his move. It's likely to be at 300 or at 100. He, I don't suppose you try to pass him in the turn. Howes are trying to get on it, but Abdi Rahman just blowing by him here. And Abdi Rahman takes over the lead, and now it's going to be up to Hauser to see if he can mount anything. But uh, as you mentioned, Dwight, it is Abdi Rahman who is the kicker. But he has not made enough of a break over Hauser. He has not broken Hauser's, Hauser's spirit here. He probably can hear him behind him. Thought maybe he was just going to drop him mentally, but he hasn't done so. Hauser continuing to hang on there. I don't think he has the leg speed, but Abdi Rahman, look at his face. He may just be out of gas altogether. Actually, Hauser's looking pretty strong here. It's going to be a race as they come to the final 100 meters, and Abdi Rahman's going to run away. It is Abdi Rahman winning it. He is a combination 5,000, 10,000, and Hauser will have to settle for second. Not officially about 14.02, so they actually ran the second half of the race faster than the first. 14.01 flat. Hauser did everything he could. 2-3 finish for Stanford and 2-3-5-6 for Stanford. So an excellent finish for them. Eight athletes in the final for the Cardinal. Jennings finishing in third place, a distant third, but a steady third. Mud of California finished fourth. So two doublers here at the Pac-10 meet. Bernhard Laggett from Washington State in the 800-1500 and now Abdi Abdurrahman from Arizona, the junior, at five and 10,000 meters. Juwan Hooker also. Oh, Hooker, of course, the 100 and the 200. There you go. So we've covered it all, pretty much. The sprints, middle distances, and distances. As we come to the women's discus throw, Silala Sua, who was the NCAA champion in the disc last year, but was the runner-up here at the Pac-10. Guess what? She gets to be runner-up again here in 1998. Simply just did not have it this afternoon. However, she did score points in three of the four throwing events. But the winner is the 1996 Olympian, Aretha Hill of the University of Washington, the senior from Seattle. She was third here at the Pac-10 last year, but really gets everything behind her throw. 208 feet 11 inch PR for her and Hill just crushing Selala Sua. Of course, Sua's got a couple of more years left. Four foot best over Sua as we see uh, Abdurrahman enjoying his victory lap. He's got to be tired. Got to be. He doesn't look it though, does he? No. <laughs> Getting all the huzzas from the crowd here at Stanford. Uh, very knowledgeable crowd, as you might expect at this meet here at Stanford. Abdi Rahman, 10,000, 5,000 double, and that uh, is no small task. Earlier today in the women's uh, 5,000, well, most of the distance races have been tactical. No tactics here. Amy Skiris took the lead in about the first five steps and never looked back. Now, she's so dominant at this distance. This is a cakewalk for her. She really needs to point towards the NCAA meet. This was just a good, solid run for her here at the Pac-10 Conference Championship. Just chose to run the 5,000 meters here instead of the 3,000 and 5,000. 
probably resting up for Buffalo. Again, Arizona women also, although doing well early in the competition, certainly didn't have any chance of winning the women's team title. So no reason for Skiris to have to run more than necessary. She'll have all the running she needs and can handle in Buffalo in a couple of weeks. And she finished uh, almost a full minute ahead of Julia Stamps, as you can see. Uh, 48 seconds to the good of Julia Stamps, and that's uh, pretty impressive numbers for Amy Skiris, and she will take her talents, considerable that they are, to Buffalo for the NCAA championship. She might get a little tougher. And Stamps doubling back from that 3,000 yesterday where she had a very tough middle of the race, came back and finished strong, started strong, finished strong. Of course, it only matters how you finish, but she looked very, very, she was laboring in the middle of the race. Skiris just running the thing, as you said, from wire to wire. So Amy Skier is the 5,000 meter champion. There's Julia Stamps, a distant second behind her, and Abdi Rahman, the winner of the men's 5,000. When we come back, final, final relays. Four by 400 for men and women. Don't go away. This is Imagine TV. Dear John, I'm leaving you and taking the Mercury. Why? We know why you're here. We want to in it to you now, but I are. Right now, you can run off in a 98 Mercury Mountaineer with low 2.9 APR financing or make tracks in a 98 Villager with your choice of 1% APR financing or $2,000 cash back. With deals like this, why go anywhere else? Till next time, imagine yourself in a Mercury. Everybody's looking for a deal. What are you going to give me, they say? At Suzuki, we've got the answer you've been waiting to hear. Because we're going to give you cash. Buy a new Suzuki outboard from 25 to 225 horsepower, and we'll give you up to $500 cash back. So what are you waiting for? See your Suzuki Marine dealer for all the details. Just say, give me cash. Market Time Drug can fill your prescriptions, and you will find cards, gift items, medical equipment rental, and most of all, friendly service. Market Time Drug located on 3rd Street. Century Ad Sales can run your business out on these networks, as well as special inserts for WSU, Mariners, NFL, and NBA games. Call Shelly or Sabrina for affordable rates or visit their new location. Impressions Video Production, top-notch digital video and audio production for creating ads, corporate video, and 3D animation. Call 332-3348 for Impressions Video Production. Hi, Doug Parker and Poacher here asking if you're in the market for a great used 4x4. If you are, here at Parker Ford Nissan, we've got the largest stock of quality used 4x4s around. And from all the top makes, including Ford, Nissan, Chevy, Dodge, Subaru, and Toyota. At Parker's, trucks are not a sideline. Trucks are what we do best. Best new, best used, best service after the sale. Folks, we've been doing it right for 15 years. Come to Parker Ford Nissan, Moscow. Watching Fox Sports Northwest. Welcome back to the Pac-10 Track and Field Championships. Barry Tompkins, Dwight Stones, Tom Fuhrer. We come now to our final two running events. They are the men's and women's 4x400 meter relay, and we start with the women's 400 meter relay. And uh, once again, at the risk of being redundant, USC, UCLA, that's where it should come from. It certainly should. Of course, UCLA having the team title wrapped up and again we're trying to find out what's happening with Joanna Hayes but um, the race will be in the middle of the track between UCLA and USC and this 4x400 as we see the other teams lined up there's a scratch in lane 4 Cal as you can see has scratched out of the race but they should be able to determine themselves very quickly UCLA USC uh, right from the very beginning with uh, Cicely Scott versus Natasha Danvers that should be uh, a race that will kind of determine where these two teams will be headed uh, by the finish line. So we are set to go for USC. It'll be Natasha Danvers. Carla, Carla Estes, already with a third place finish in the 200 meters, will run the second leg. Christy yeah, Johnson will run third. And the anchor, the 800 meter champion, Brigitte Langerholtz. For UCLA, Cicely Scott, Mamie Tumase, Zalika Davis, and Michelle Perry. It's not to say there's nobody else in this field, but uh, clearly those are the two favorites. And we're underway. Here we go. Four the by 400 meter relay. Arizona State. Washington State. And early State. on, Stanford, uh, very UCLA, close USA. race uh, in Oregon, lane one. Arizona State, and Arizona State making up a little bit. And Oregon out in lane number seven also making up a little bit of ground. And they will run these first three turns in lanes and break for the pull on the back stretch. And for so many years, it's been USC, UCLA in this 4x400, both on the men's and women's side. Both squads have always stockpiled good sprinters and quarter milers in order to uh, 
at least field one excellent team, if oftentimes not two very, very deep teams. Even with the scholarship limitation, these are events that the two schools have really taken pride in, tremendous tradition in these two events, relays. The only team events in track and field, and Natasha Danvers is really running an excellent opening leg for USC. Cicely Scott really laboring as she hands off to Mamie Tuasi and Carla Estes gets the stick from Natasha Danvers. Yeah, gonna be a long way back for UCLA, but uh, Mamie Tuasi out uh, quickly over in uh, the inside for Arizona State. Uh, it is Dwenel, or rather Danielle Linder, who has already had a pretty good day too. So right now it is USC with about 20 yards on Arizona State. And UCLA running no better than third right now. Washington in fourth place, running the second leg for Washington is Marzette Penton. And Danvers running a 53-6 opening leg, excellent. And Cicely Scott laboring in with a 54.8. And Carla Estes is simply taking advantage of the lead that she received and is out there pushing the pace. Arizona State still in second with Linder for Arizona State. And UCLA back in third being passed now by Washington State. And Marzette Penton, the Bruins really have dug themselves a hole. So Christy Johnson starts out on the third leg for UCLA, running in second place for Arizona State, Jennifer Bridgman, and running the third leg for Washington, Keisha Griffiths. UCLA uh, considerably behind, making up a little bit right now. Here's Jennifer Bridgman for Arizona State, starting to close a little bit of ground on Carla, or rather on uh, Christy Johnson. And moving ahead into second place now for Washington is Keisha Griffiths. And Keisha Griffiths uh, got a bead right now on Christy Johnston and passes her. So Washington has taken over the lead. Well, this is an interesting turn of events as UCLA is trying to get themselves back into it. USC right there. Washington may have made their move a little too early, even though she's hanging on very well. Keisha Griffiths hanging on to her lead extremely well. So it's going to be Asya Mohammed of Washington against Brigida Langerholz of USC. Langerholz is not really the pure quarter miler that Mohammed is, but she has the strength, but she's had to come back from the 800 meters. This should be interesting. UCLA solidly in fourth place. Not likely that... Uh, Michelle Perry is going to catch, catch Geronda White, so it looks like a fourth-place finish for the UCLA Bruins. And Muhammad running very steadily right now. We'll see what Langerholtz can do as they head into the final turn. Langerholtz has closed a little bit. It is Muhammad for Washington in first place. Langerholtz for USC running second and gaining ground. Langerholtz is in a great position to strike if she's got something left. And Langerholtz comes to the outside and tries to get up on Mohammed. Mohammed hanging in there, but now Langerholtz gets by her and USC is going to win it. And coming on hard right now is Charlotte, or rather is uh, Geronda White for Arizona State. And USC has won it, and very close for second. And UCLA just getting fourth, holding off Oregon. For them, it's lucky they did not need the points. Joanna Hayes, of course, not able to run. 53.4 anchor leg for Brigitte Langerholt. So a really solid performance by USC, and this the final running event on the women's side. And an excellent finish for Washington as they... Uh, come away with a second place, and here was the pass that made the difference. Well, that really shows you the international experience, the maturity of Langerholt. She just bided her time, stayed in contact, knew she had the strength, was able to watch Muhammad laboring from behind. That will always give you a lot of energy to see that the person you're trying to catch is starting to labor, starting to rig, and it gives you a tremendous amount of incentive to pass them and pass them strongly. When you make a pass, you've got to make a, a determined pass to show you have no chance of catching me. I have the momentum. I'm going to win this race. And the USC Trojans ran a very well-schooled race. 336.61 unofficial time. Uh, very, very good solid finish for the Lady Trojans who had some disappointing performances in other parts of the meet, but it's a good way to wrap it up. Absolutely so. USC wins it. Uh, fell behind after taking the early lead and then on the anchor leg, Langer holds the 800-meter champion coming back and winning it for her team. And a very good race, as we said, for Washington, not to mention for Arizona State. Very disappointing race for UCLA. Here, then, is the meet summary. Uh, we began things by looking at the men's 4 by 100 meter relay, which UCLA won uh, on the women's version. It was also UCLA. And then Bernard Lagat with a brilliant 1500 meter run. Really a brilliant run, and, and because of the way he ran it yesterday, you had to think they were going to go out and push the pace, but he bided his time, waited for the right moment, and just pounced on the rest of the field. Michael Stember, a bit of a disappointment for Stanford in 
in that race, came back to get second. But Laggett, that was just the first half of a double. The hurdles went to USC. Joanna Hayes winning the hurdles, but getting injured in the process. We still have not found out how, uh, how bad an injury she's got. Jerome Davis winning the 400 easily in his best time of his three championships. And Andrea Anderson holding off USC in the 400 meters. Jaworin Hooker, we knew he would win the 100 meters. 10.24, it looked very, very easy. An upset in a little bit of a way. And Shakita Jones, the freshman from UCLA in the women's 100. Laggett coming back in the 800 off a very slow page. Uh, Lopucic of, the, of USC in the 800. Uh, they went 1-2 in that particular race. Brian Fell slammed into a couple of hurdles in the men's hurdles, but uh, held off his competition at a personal best. Natasha Danvers looking excellent in the hurdles with Joanna Hayes no longer in the race. And then Jaworin Hooker winning our premier race, coming back and matching his personal best and beating Jerome Davis and Damian Allen in that 200. And Tori Edwards coming back after her loss in the 100 to win the 200. Abdi Abdurrahman makes it a double. The 10,000 last night, the 5,000 today in a reasonably good time. And Amy Skirish, of course, wire to wire in the women's 5,000. And we will see Jaworin Hooker once again as he leads it off for his team in the men's 4x400. That'll be our last event. But before we get to that, let's get to the field with more. Here's Tom Fewer. Tom? Thanks, Barry. Well, just an update on some of the uh, injury situations. Joanna Hayes, we saw carried off the track and some concern because I think when she was carried off the track, everybody thought that UCLA's potential NCAA title hopes would be going off with her. It's just a cramp, fortunately, in her right hamstring. Now, Mabratim Kevleski, he did not run the 5,000 after his second place performance in the 10,000, purely precautionary. No injury there. And for Shakita Jones, who we saw win the 4 by 100 meter relay after USC got disqualified and who ran very fast in that 100 meter win over Tori Edwards, again, a precaution. The NCAA championships coming up June 3rd to 6th in Buffalo. UCLA's women's team has an outstanding chance at winning the meet. And in terms of Kevleski, he's got to defend both the 5,000 and 10,000 meter titles. So everything is fine with the Bruins. No casualties today. Back up to you, Barry. All right, thanks very much, Tom. It bodes well for all the Kenyan marathoners around, too, because Tom Fewer is injured and, uh, and will not be able to uh, participate in the marathon for a while. Boston Marathon did him in. That's true. Jammed his, uh, his uh, knee again at uh, mile 16 and uh, let those Kenyans win it. So, uh, you know, and, uh, there's always next year, though. So we prepare now for our final event on the track, and uh, that is the men's 4x400. Four this should be most interesting also. You know, every night at 10 on Fox Sports Net, it's Fox Sports News Primetime. You get all the scores, you get all the highlights, you get all the good stuff. All the breaking news that covers your hometown team seven nights a week. We're there. Fox Sports News Primetime every night at 10. Fox Sports News Primetime. At ten. At ten. <laughs> 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 well, that promo may be longer than this race. I don't know. It's the uh, men's 4x400 four meter relay. And uh, once again, you start uh, looking at favorites in this one. And you, uh, you look to the center of the track, and that is USC. Uh, have to be considered, I would think, uh, an overwhelming favorite. Washington, way on the outside, but with a pretty good time, 305-21. And uh, Jaworin Hooker running the leadoff leg four. The Huskies out there in lane nine, and that's going to be a long way around for the uh, for Hooker as he's going to be able to key off no one and has to run deep into the first turn to hand off. Jerome Davis, of course, for USC, who had already won the 400 meters, will run second. I'm uh, supposing they're going to put him there in order to break the race open for the Trojans. And UCLA, just not the team that they have had in the past, as we see Arizona State will be in lane one, Stanford two, UCLA in three, with Granville, who's coming back from the 800, Strutzel coming back from the 800, McElroy coming back from the four by one, and the triple jump, and Fell coming up for the 400 hurdles. These are some tired athletes in, on that team. Well, that's true, and Hooker, of course, has both run and won the 100 and 200, so uh, he, too, uh, has had more than a little bit of work today. Everybody else uh, relatively uh, in good shape. So uh, Kipling got, will uh, run the uh, anchor leg for Washington State in this race, although now we have uh, word that he may not be running, but, uh, well, I guess he is. Kipling got, will run the anchor. He was uh, in the 1500, and we are set to go. I will tell you that Michael Granville, besides being a great 800 meter runner in high school, was also a decent quarter miler. He was just uh, laboring in the shadow of O.B. Moore, who was a phenomenal 400 meter runner, actually made the semifinals of the Olympic trials. But Granville, very, very strong athlete, as well as good leg speed for the Bruins. But this should be all USC with Leroy Jordan out there for the Trojans out in lane five. 
Trying to cast four, pardon me, lane four for USC. Bramfield running a very good opening leg, solid opening leg, and uh, Jordan Hooker out there all by himself. He sure is. Like, like running a time trial out there. And SC running no better than seventh right at the moment as Hooker just has it to himself here, and Hooker loping in to make the first pass as he will pass to Derek Pryor. And Pryor's done pretty well so far today, too. So Washington has the lead early in this men's 4x400, and USC has already, been, already made up some ground with Jerome Davis. 46-7 opening leg for Granville, but uh, Jerome Davis now in the second leg. Expect a whole lot of things to change here for USC. I expect that he will be handing off the baton no worse than second, certainly, as UCLA's got another 800-meter runner running on this particular leg in Jess Strutzel, who finished fourth in the 800. And look at Jerome Davis just overhaul everyone as he now puts his sights on Derek Pryor, and he just might be handing off to the Trojans in first place. So it is Pryor Washington trying to hang on, and there goes Jerome Davis right by him. He started in fourth place, blew by everybody. So the Trojans make the pass first. Davis handing off to Dion Joyner, and now Joyner is underway for USC. Scott Annabelle for Washington running second, and UCLA has moved into third place, running the third leg for UCLA, Jim McElroy. Now it's up to Jordan to hold off, excuse me, Joyner to hold off the rest of the people so that he can and give the baton to Ray Carter Joyner. for the victory. Jerome Davis ran a phenomenal 44-7 relay leg, and he Dijon ran it intelligently. He didn't try to make up all SC. that deficit all and at once. He slowly but surely grounded out, passed some people in the, the turn, and then and just third handed the baton off in first place from fifth. An excellent Lider effort, but that's that's your workhorse. That's your three-time Pac-10 400-meter champion. As Joyner is about to hand off to Carter for about a seven-meter lead. So Joyner actually extended the lead that Davis gave him. Now it is Carter with about 10 10 meters running on B.J. Dawson of Washington on the anchor leg. Fell for UCLA, starting to pick up a little ground on Dawson. So UCLA has come from the depths. And they now will move into second place as Fell passes Dawson. And now Dawson back up on Fell. Yeah, Fell is using way too much energy to try to make that pass. He is a 400-meter hurdler, so he's got some good strength and good endurance. But he used way too much of his energy on that backstretch. And now Dawson has his sight set on Ray Carter of USC. Carter may think this thing is in the bag. And you got a guy in B.J. Dawson who smells victory. He can smell that finish line. And Carter is hurting. Carter's tying up in a big way. And Washington is going to win the 4 by 4 What an upset. The Huskies with a Strong leadoff leg by Jawarin Howard. Excuse me, Jawarin Hunter, pardon me, and Derek Pryor, an excellent second leg, and then a gutty anchor by B.J. Dawson wins the 4 by 400 for the University of Washington. A big time anchor leg by Dawson. It looked as though he's going to be passed by Fell of UCLA, and he comes on and catches the leader. We're coming back. There's a company out there in the business of moving things. But it's not a railroad. It's a company that moves the most precious cargo of all. Your ideas. It moves them via long distance, wireless, video, internet, directories and local telephone lines. It's a company you might have thought was just a telephone company. Gee. Until now. If handheld trimmers get you down, call this number for free details about the revolutionary DR trimmer mower. The DR rolls light as a feather on two big wheels, trims around rocks, along fences, walls, and buildings. Plus, the DR mows lawns, fields, even roadside ditches without struggle. So call toll-free now for a free catalog about the revolutionary DR, the DR trimmer mower. You gotta get dirty. It's a mental cleansing, if you will. Cleaning your insides while dirtying your outsides. And that's what Chevron with Techron's all about. It helps keep my engine clean. Chevron with Techron, simply smarter. Yep. Rome on Shaquille O'Neal. The next big game Shaquille wins will be his first. Rome on Barry Bonds. If the guy's not going to be accessible and it's not going to be friendly, what does he expect? Jim Rome on The Last Word. Weeknights on Fox Sports Net. In the world of college athletics, no conference compares to the Pac-10. During the 96-97 season, the Pac-10 dominated the NCAA, winning a record 14 team championships. Seven Pac-10 schools brought home at least one NCAA crown, while Stanford became the first school in NCAA history to win six titles in a single year. 
The Pacific 10 Conference salutes the student athletes and their coaches who produce this tremendous achievement. Truly making the Pac-10 the Conference of Champions. Well, we began this day by saying it was optimum conditions for the sport of track and field, and the performances did not disappoint. Biggest cheers of all, however, were left for those from UCLA as they win both the men's and the women's competition. UCLA defeating USC, Arizona, and Washington State in the top four for the men. Stanford finishes second to UCLA. USC is a disappointing third in Washington fourth. That's a wrap for us from here at Stanford. For Tom Fewer and my partner, Dwight Stones, I'm Barry Tompkins. So long, everybody. Interleague plays.